Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And welcome. Uh, thank you for, for being here. Uh, I'm Javier Ruiz from Simba Staff, Guadalajara. And I will be chair, the chairman of this session. AC, uh, AC2, Control Applications. And we have in this session six papers. I hope you will find them very interesting. So for um, for the first paper, the control of the, oh, the first paper is control scheme for rotary base inverted pendulum by means of nested saturation functions by Cesar Alejandro Villaseñor and Octavio Gutierrez Frias. So Cesar, if you can share your, your screen, please. Let me just remind you that you have uh, approximately 15 minutes for your presentation and five minutes for questions. Cesar, can you share your presentation, please? Cesar, can you hear me? Since he has a problem with the microphone. Hmm. He's not allowed to reach I'm going to check that. Hmm. Okay, Cesar, now you're a presenter. Try again, please. Go ahead, Cesar. Yes, thank you. I, I, I didn't cut. Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. You can start now. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, let me uh, present this paper with the name uh, control scheme for rotary based inverted pendulum by means of netted saturation function. Uh, the author of this paper is my advisor, uh, Octavio Gutierrez Frias, and also me, Cesar Alejandro Villasenor Rios, from Instituto Politécnico Nacional. Yes, the contents of this presentation is about uh, five sections. Introduction uh, about the, the paper, uh, the dynamic model, the control scheme proposed in this problem, in this paper, and also the numerical simulations that were uh, implemented for this uh, article, and uh, the conclusions in the in the paper. To begin, let's uh, let's see the introduction. So, the automatic control theory is a fundamental element in many applications. So it's related with the uh, other research fields as mechatronics, robotics, electronics, uh, chemistry, and also others uh, like uh, like mechanics and, uh, and others. So one of the most interesting and intricate problems in the automatic uh, control theory is the uh, analysis and control of underactuated mechanical systems. Uh, that's uh, because of the main uh, characteristic of underactuated system is to have less uh, control inputs and degrees of freedom. That's why it's an at, uh, attractive topic for research in control theory. And also because this kind of uh, systems appears in practical application as robotics, aerospace, aerospace, uh, marine systems, and others. A classical underactuated mechanical system is the inverted pendulum type, like the figure shown in the screen. Uh, and also have different configurations, like wheel in, uh, wielded pendulum, uh, like the, the figure shown, the spherical pendulum, the furta pendulum, the acrobat, the fly inverted pendulum, among others. So, several works have been developed to establish and also the tracking trajectory uh, problem 
eh, in inverted pendulum systems by diverse control approaches, la, uh, approaches like uh, proportional integral de derivative control, the PID, the PID control, <coughs> using the linear approximation of the systems, and also the use of linear state observers. The linear quadratic regulator, LQR, the partial feedback linearization, <coughs> the nested saturation functions, the backstepping, uh, the sliding modes, and many others. So, this is uh, one of the uh, one of the system most studied in the control uh, theory researches. So, in this work, we developed the the system named the rotary based inverted pendulum system (RBIP) system. This consists in a planar inverted free swing pendulum uh, in a mobile base that can move in a horizontal, uh, in a horizontal axe uh, direction actuated by a pair of forces at it, its ends and can rotate around its center of gravity. So, as shown in figure one, the RBIP system consists in, in a base with a free swing pendulum with angular position theta, and the base can rotate also in angular position alpha. Has two uh, forces that generate the movement in horizontal uh, direction, and the este, and with this pair of forces can uh, can manipulate the alpha angle also. So, the dynamic equation were modeled by Euler-Lagrange equation, Euler-Lagrange equations. Uh, this dynamic model is shown in uh, in the matrix form of the equation one shown in the, the screen with these uh, definitions for M, C, G, U, and Q. So, uh, taking this this model and without of loss of generality, we can consider the following uh, uh, the following definitions. Uh, where IB is equal to 1 and IP is equal to 0. Um, again, we uh, without loss of generality. Uh, with this consideration, we can uh, express the generalist, uh, the generalist coordinates as, uh, as follows, as shown in these uh, system equations in, in 2. With the uh, definitions about A and B shown in the bottom. <laughs> so, the control scheme proposed in this in this work considers uh, uh, considers the dynamic model where we can see the U2 input uh, control acts direct uh, directly to alpha. The control scheme uh, presented in this work is divided into two control laws or into two st steps. An either linear control proportional uh, derivative PD control for tracking trajectory in the alpha angle, and then using the, the desired trajectory alpha D as artificial control, the system can be expressed as change integrator, as change of integrators with nonlinear perturbation and controlled by means a uh, by means of nested saturation functions is proposed with this new form of express the system. The, di uh, the diagram uh, of this control scheme can be seen in the figure two, where the inner control loop uh, is, shown, is shown here. So the closed loop control for X and theta generates the, uh, the desired trajectory alpha D and is used in the closed loop control for alpha. So the first step is the control for angle alpha that consider that the third equation of the RBIP system, the control input U2 acts directly to alpha. And let's define the tracking trajectory error as shown in the equation three, uh, where alpha D is the desired trajectory. So the control input U2 is defined in the equation four. 
uh, then the uh, error dynamics can be expressed uh, can be expressed as shown in equation five. Uh, with this uh, error dynamics, we propose the control parameters k1 and k2 such that the characteristic polynomial of error dynamics is Hurwitz. This means that the limit when time uh, tends to infinity, the, the error is, the, is equal to zero. So what this means? Uh, this means that uh, alpha uh, follows the desired trajectory alpha d. So control u2 allows the alpha coordinate to follow the desired trajectory alpha d. So it's possible to replace one to another, alpha for alpha d. And use it as control input, as artificial control input for X and theta system with combination with the control input U1, right? So using this pair of control inputs, we can uh, propose uh, these auxiliary controls uh, in order to express the system in states variables x1, x2, theta1, and theta2 with a new control input uh, v. So the new control input will be uh, v and the states variables will be uh, x1, x2, theta1, and theta2. So the system can be expressed as, for, uh, as shown in uh, a question system six, where we can see that v appears in both uh, theta2 and x2. So, uh, in order to use the nested saturation functions, we need to express this system as chains of integrators, right? So, uh, the idea is that uh, control input B uh, uh, don't appear in X2, only appear in the last one. This, uh, this representation is the same as partial. Linear is model of the inverted pendulum uh, pendulum on a car IPC system presented in a previous uh, work. So this representation is valid when in the upper half plane, right? So according to the co uh, the coupling theorem, uh, we can uh, propose the following uh, uh, coordinate transformation uh, shown in the screen in equations seven, which leads that uh, to a change of integrator with a nonlinear perturbation. We can see that F, uh, BF appears only in omega two, but don't appears in the others. But, uh, but a nonlinear perturbation appears in uh, C2. <clears throat> So in order to use the nested saturation function, uh, the nested saturation function techniques, uh, we propose the following linear, part, uh, linear transformation uh, with a new uh, variables, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So the system eight can be transferred into the new system nine, where appears the F, uh, BF in all in all uh, our variables. With this representation, we propose the following uh, controller for BF uh, shown in equation 10, where uh, sigma, sigma beta, sigma gamma, and sigma delta is a linear um, uh, function, uh, uh, satur linear saturation function, sorry. So according with the work of Aguilar, all these states of uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 of the system nine, in closed loop uh, with the controller BF, uh, all these states are bounded in affinite time uh, with the following constraints shown in the equation um, 11. So this, uh, this controller is based on a previous work. So, uh, consider that this, uh, all the variables are bounded after a, a finite time, the controller BF is no longer saturated. So uh, uh, the, the new form of the, of the controller is this. 
with no saturation functions. Therefore, as shown in the previous work, the system name is globally asymptotically stable and locally exponentially stable in closed loop uh, with controller BF in the sense of Lyapunov, when the control parameters satisfy the, the restriction shown uh, before in 11, and the inequalities are fulfilled. fulfilled. When these inequalities uh, are fulfilled, the system is uh, asymptotically, asymptotically stable and locally exponentially stable uh, to zero or to origin. In this work, we shown uh, several numerical simulations, uh, some uh, numerical simulations implement, uh, is implemented in MATLAB software, software with the following parameters shown in the screen, M is one, uh, etc. The control parameters were set with these uh, values, and also the initial conditions were set with this uh, with these values. So the results of this numerical simulation uh, also, sorry, this control scheme was uh, uh, compared with another linear control uh, scheme in order to show the uh, uh, to show the, the effectiveness of this control scheme proposed of, uh, in this work. The, the, Cesar, Cesar, you yes? have two more. You have two more minutes. Yes. So uh, we propose uh, this linear classical feedback control law with these uh, values designed by LQR technique. So this is uh, those. This is the result. The results where control scheme proposed in this work show that have less uh, time stabilization and no uh, oscillation phenomena in both in horizontal displacement and angle and angle of the pendulum. But the control uh, input U2 uh, in both control uh, in both controls uh, used, the control scheme proposed shown a picking phenomena, but is less than LQR control R is uh, implement, implemented. So this is the results of this paper. The conclusion is that uh, the control scheme proposed consists in a combination of con two controllers, a, a linear PD and an state saturation function when the system can be expressed as chain of integrator plus a, a nonlinear perturbation and several and some numerical simu uh, simulations shown the stability to zero of the whole system in closed loop with the control scheme. So uh, these are some of the references of my of this paper and Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Susar, for the presentation. Uh, we have time for one or two questions. Uh, does anybody, anybody have a question? Please raise your hand or activate your microphone. Anyone? Are there any questions? Everything were clear. Was clear. It, seems the, it's a, it seems that the presentation was very clear. Uh, I have a question, uh, Cesar. Yes. In your control design, do you, do you consider any robustness considerations? Uh, for for, in, for instance, uh, the presence of perturbations or noise? Uh, no, no, at this time, because mm. uh, we thought that uh, uh, the robust uh, control scheme uh, could be implement implemented uh, in the future so uh, it's one of the works that i try to to do mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> uh, so uh, in in this work it, uh, we are not considered the external or internal perturbation but we try to implement it like uh, active storage re rejection control or mm -hmm. something like that it's like demo maybe or Mm -hmm. Made a construct construct uh, uh, between uh, both. Even in your simulations, didn't you try to introduce some uh, perturbations or no? Uh, no, 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 in, not, this not in this case. Case. No, okay. in this case, because 
as I said, uh, one, uh, as I said, this is a uh, future work for maybe for <laughs> for the Congress. OK, well, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks. So it seems that there is no, no more questions, so we'll proceed uh, with the second. Thank you, Susan, uh, with the second thank paper you. in this session, which is entitled A List Sheets of Server Application in Photovia Reactors for Microalgae Cultivation by Abraham Rodriguez, Jose Luis Robles, and Leonel Amabilis. Uh, is any of the authors present? Uh, who's going to make the presentation? Jose Luis Robles, OK. OK, well, one second. Mm. Ray, Jose Luis can make presentation now. OK, Jose Luis, go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can see your presentation. Uh, please share, oh, well, share your presentation. Uh, the presentation. Right <clears throat> Now you can see my presentation. Yeah. 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 Let me. I need to uh, put on my camera. Or it's not necessary. Uh, as you wish. I, I think it will be it will be better if you activate your camera. Okay. Thank you. Now you can see my my camera. It's... Yes or not? I can. I cannot see. No, 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 I, I don't I don't see your camera. Well, in my laptop is on, but I don't know if you can see it. Oh, let's, uh, please oh, continue. I don't start off like that. OK. OK, okay let me put my time. Can I start now? Yep. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is, is Jose Luis Robles Magdaleno, and I'm going to expose my, my work. We call a Lipship Observer application in a photovia reactor for a microalga cultivation okay um, well for um, wait a minute uh, no, no. Uh, for a little bit introduction in, in an industry such as pharmaceutical pharmaceutical food and energy industry the growth of microalga play a essential role this is mostly important because the final product of the microalga it's important maybe it can be a uh, vitamins, medicines, uh, energy results, etc. So that is the important for the growing of the microalga. The microalga work with a photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process in which the biomass is produced from the sunlight as an energy source and the carbon dioxide as a waste product. So that is the way the microalga work. Okay, the microalga may be grow in a large scale open system like a lakes and ponds and in close control system like a photovia reactor. This is a that will be the the process that will be focus photovia reactor. So the photovia reactor is a close controller system that allow the optimal operations, minimal pollutions and maximum productivity of the microalga. As a result, we are growing microalga in photovia reactor offer several benefits that the open system. That kind of benefits can be uh, simply like the control. We can control this kind of system and, and it's more difficult. Sorry, the control the, the large scales like lakes at, at once. OK, uh, for the control part, the control nonlinear biological system uh, has a long been difficult for current theoretical because nonlinear biological systems have a lot of uh, trains and benefits like the mechanical system, and they are much more complex in particular because we have a cultivation of microalgae that is uh, chemical things, so that part of the the system for the system is more complex. So for the since there are great interest in estimation in complex variable in this kind of photo, uh, photosynthetic organisms, the topic of the estimation state is uh, has been widely explored in the literature. We have the Lugumber observer, the Kalmar filter, and we are the most we know. Uh, actually, we're gonna use the Lugumber observer for the estimation. Um, sorry, uh, now. 
The current techniques we are using is the LMI solution for the electromechanical systems. So these kind of techniques have been uh, uh, have been advantages of the are really simple in the programming, and they are they are based to uh, in the knowledge of maximum coordinates. This work proposed a study of the use state estimation based on leasing coordinates for the state for the state estimation. Based, based on the Machika model for the spirulina maxima. Spirulina maxima is the microalga we're going to use, and we are for experimental things, we have the, the model. Okay. Uh, for the mathematical things, we start with suppose the fx is a continuous piecewise function on t and satisfies the Lipschitz condition, and like the equation number one. Therefore, I feel bigger than zero, such that the equation is the of the states with x t equal to x zero has unique solution. Uh, also, it's, it's assumed that f uh, is a continuous function in some domain d, in, in so the air, assuming that the delivery exists and it's continuous in A, and it's for convex subjects. Uh, so like the equation number two, L, it's the Lipschitz condition. So uh, now we have the two lemmas we use. If x, f, x, and the derivative of x are continuous, we have for any domain, f is local Lipschitz. And uh, if f, x, and the derivative of x are continuous in a, b, the f is globally Lipschitz for any kind of bounded. Now we want to go work with a normal nonlinear system equation, like the equation number three. We have the nonlinearities in f x u that depends on the states, and if the function f x u satisfies the Lipschitz condition, but we call we can call this system like Lipschitz nonlinear system. Okay. So now we're gonna reformulate the Lipschitz condition to work in this kind of model. So we're gonna go work with the Equation x t x. We're gonna uh, resolve this kind of equation, and we define the Euclidean standard uh, equation. So if we squaring the equa the normal equation, the normal Euclidean equation, sorry, we can equal the well. We're gonna eliminate the the root for the Euclidean equation. So we can uh, equal this part of the equation with the last equation, x t x. So we can have these results. x t x is equal to the squaring for the Euclidean norm. <clears throat> and now we can use the nonlinear system to work with this kind of condition. So we're going to use the, the equation we modified before to have the equation number six, f x t less f uh, x hat t. So in this particular case, for the for our convenience, we use the the norm too. You can use the infinity norm, but in this case, for more uh, uh, easy to have the results, we use the normal too. Okay. To simplify uh, so to simplify or facilitate the equation, we take the difference between f x less f x hat and equal to f, uh, f, well, uh, this f, I don't remember the name for the, for this sign. Okay, so as well, we, we simplify the difference between x and x hat to equal to the error. So we have the final uh, equation. It's more simple and more facil facility to use. When, when uh, now we use the equation for to write the equation in another way. This inequality has the same property of the Lipschitz observe uh, the Lipschitz condition. Sorry. So if we assume the positive constants and phi, the Lipschitz condition, we can reformulate that like that. So finally, only for convenience, we have the well. Well, we rewrite the equation in this way to have the possibility to work with that. Now, uh, with the for the observer, we use uh, well, sorry for the dynamic of the error. We use the classic converse uh, equation for Lugenberg. So we propose this observer is based based in Lugenberg observer. Sorry, this is a mistake. Uh, the equation is this one. 
And finally, we can uh, substitute in the equation five and the equation 10. We have this kind of error equation, error equation. And it's easy to see that the first sign, like the BU, is, is we can eliminate this BU and this BU, but we can do, don't solve this problem because the function F is different. So we cannot eliminate this kind of function. So we need to still keep the FPM function uh, like a, because it's different. So for this, uh, in this part, we solve the problem like uh, we can normally we uh, we solve the problem. We can factor the term A and we have this kind of equation, the equation 12, and then we can factor in again the term X less X hat and substituting the this part of the equation like a, the a F with this sign. I don't remember the name. So finally we can have the equation 13. So it's more easy to satisfy by LMIs. So we propose the quadratic Lyapunov function like here, and we can define the fine Q like positive and symmetric. Okay, so we need to find this kind of this kind of variable. So now for the practical part, I have this kind of reactor, and it's batch type. So we have this kind of lamp. And the source the light for the microalgae. This is a recipe and we have the microalgae with the nutrients. So X1 and X2 is a biomass and X2 is the nutrients of the micro, the, the food for the microalgae. And in this kind of tube, we have only the feedback for the nutrients because with the time, the microalgae uh, eat the nutrients. So we need to uh, supplement the, this kind of nutrients. So. And with experience, we have this kind of model. It's based in uh, Monoff model. So we are, we are where U is the specific growth rate, X1 is the biomass concentration, X2 is the nutrient concentration, U is the microalgae growth rate, uh, A1 is the nominal growth rate, A2 is the Monoff saturation constant. A3 is the nominal gel coefficients, and A4 is the substrate concentration at the filling stage. Okay, now we can optimize the, the production of the biomass. So we use, we calculate the optimal dilution rate for the nutrient. So this is the equation for the, the optimal dilution. And it's required to separate the linear part for the nonlinear part to kind of work with this kind of model. And we use to, well, we need to find the triangular form in this system. So we use this, uh, the follow uh, the form of this for try to convert the normal system to the system we can use in, for the observer. So now, well, this is the D form of this. So, uh, when you when we use this deformation, we obtain this this system, and the follow system. But uh, we can work with that because it's triangular form. We separate the the linear with the nonlinear part, and it's and satisfy the required to the to the observer. So now for find the Lipschitz constant, we use the Jacobian. Uh, this is the the step for find the the Lipschitz constant. We use the infinitum form, and finally we obtain this value for the normal, for the Lipschitz constant. So now we can uh, uh, pass to the simulation. Uh, this is the the calculate we use in in MATLAB for find the the Q. We use uh, the LMIs and Jalmin, the delivery Jalmin in MATLAB. So this is the the matrix I find I found, uh, and it's. Uh, uh, what is the word? Um, and satisfy the required we need. It's symmetric and it's positive defined. Okay, so now we can use the simulation. This is the parameter of simulation we use. This kind of parameter we obtain for another kind of paper, and and some of them are a practical experience. So it's it's value I I obtain. For the results, we have this kind of estimation and the estimation of the state one. Uh, we can see the biomass concentration is very close, so it's almost the same like the, the real value. So that is very important for us because the, 
the biomass is one of the value. Uh, we, it's hard to obtain for the bioreactor because the sensors or maybe the, the forms we can have this kind of value is, is hard. Or sometimes we need to stop the process to have this, this value. So for that reason, uh, or the principal result of this paper is we can estimate the biomass concentration inside of the inside of the photobioreactor. Okay, and for another results, we have the same uh, for the state number two. We have the the nutrient concentration, and it's very clear to see that the estimation is it's 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 good. In this case, I'll, sometimes it's not like very important to have the state number two or the nutrient because the nutrients and the biomass have connection, so it's not like so necessary, but for obtain um, different kind of uh, values, it's good to have this kind of uh, state estimation. Finally, we have the error estimation and it's zero, so it's it's very easy. We have almost in three uh, three seconds the the error in zero. And finally, uh, for conclusion for this kind of work, we have a new structure was built for different variant chasing type of nonlinear Lipschitz system. We use the Euclidean norm. Uh, we restructure the, the Lugumber observer using the, the LMAIs. And it's, it's important for us because we find another way to, to estimate this kind of variable because we are using another kind of observer, um, maybe a little bit more difficult to implement it. So, for us, is it's important to see this kind of uh, structure. It's like a new structure for us, so it's easy to implement it in in, in our bioreactor, photobioreactor. Okay, and finally, this is the reference for my for my work. And thank you so much for the attention. Uh, I don't know if I have time for for questions, so. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Um, yeah, we have two or three minutes for questions. For the list. Well, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, I, I need to. Uh, I can still sharing or. No, uh, lift your presentation for in case that there are some questions okay. if you need to. So, are there any questions? Uh, anyone? Please raise your hand or activate your micro. Anyone? Are there any questions? <clears throat> it, seems, it seems that we have no questions. Uh, I have a question, Jose Luis. Uh, uh, it wasn't clear to me from, from the process, uh, which, which of the variables are the, of your process are you measuring in which, uh, or are you estimating all the variables? Uh, I was only estimating the biomass uh, concentration and the nutrients. And I use the life of the reactor because uh, I can see the, well, I'm going to show you the, the project. And the practical things, I have one sensor inside of this wall of the bioreactor because I can estimate the the normal life, okay? And for the other part, we have another light sensor in this part to see, uh, how can I explain, the the observation of the life of the micro. I don't know if I can explain that part. So I use this comparison to estimate the biomass inside of the reactor. And you use, yeah, and after that you use these variables for the control. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Any other question? Since that we have no more questions. Well, thank you again, Jose Luis. Thank you so much. Could you can See stop you. now sharing your presentation. Okay. See you. Goodbye. Thank you. So let's move to the next paper, the third paper. So the title of the third paper is uh, Modeling and Simulation of a Furuta Pendulum Actuated by an Inertial Wheel by Israel Alejandro Cadena, Martin Bustamante Encino, and Rafael Stanley Nunes. This paper will be presented by Rafael Stanley. Yes. Rafael, please share your presentation.
can you see my presentation now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. So, Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, okay, my name is Rafael Stanley Nunez Cruz. I'm going to present uh, this work titled Modeling and Simulation of a Fruta Pendulum Actuated by, inertia, by an Inertia Wheel. Uh, the, the use of experimental platforms inside a laboratory uh, has a, a wide uh, range of, of uses. Uh, um, most of the time we, we use experimental platforms as a safety manner to test uh, con different control techniques or to, uh, to see the, the effects of, of changing some parameters or or many other uh, application. This within a safe, safely uh, environment that can let us, um, uh, 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 that can avoid risking uh, valuable uh, equipment. Uh, for, for example, this, this picture shows a, an earthquake simulator. Uh, it is not uh, feasible to, to test uh, control techniques or, or to see the, the, the effect of some parameter variation or, on a real building. So we use uh, something like a mock-up to, to, to test the, uh, the, our uh, control designs uh, before we implement it on the real, uh, on, on the real plants. So uh, within this context, context uh, we, we present uh, now uh, an exp uh, a new type of experimental control platform, we, which can be intended as a, an academic tool uh, to, study, to study different uh, areas, such as uh, kinematic modeling, dynamic modeling, um, uh, and the effects of parametric uh, geometric variations, uh, uh, specifically for the application of control and, and analysis of, of system. The, the experimental platform we are proposing is based on, on three different types of uh, existing uh, experimental control platforms. We, we use, uh, we, we proposed an underactuate system like the original Fruta Pendulum, like the Pendulum of on, on a card, or like the uh, double uh, inverted Pendulum and those well-known platforms. And we also use some characteristic of the inertia Pendulum, specifically the, the inertial actuation. Uh, and we, uh, the, the idea is to uh, join these, these two type of mechanisms using an arborescent structure. Uh, usually this kind of, of mechanisms are, are, can, can be seen in humanoid robots or in uh, um, um, some kind of manipulators like hand look like uh, manipulators, uh, manipulators with fingers. So we, we take these three different uh, ideas from, from the, the, the existing uh, experimental platforms to propose a, a, a new one. This is the, 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 the kinematic change of the, of the proposed system. Uh, as, as you can see here, there are the, the, the architecture is an arborescent structure it has two branches. We, we, we can see this is an arborescent structure because it has um, one fixed point and we have two uh, uh, independent end effectors. Uh, uh, that's the reason we said we have two, two branches in this, uh, in this model. One, one branch goes from the uh, first joint Q1 and goes to the to the left side of the mechanisms where we have the the second joint the second joint uh, where we put uh, the the inertia wheel the the other branch the on the right hand side side is uh, is the is where we uh, put the 
the, the inverted pendulum. So the, the idea of, of this uh, mechanism is to um, generate torque using the inertia wheel, where, uh, which is transferred uh, to, the, to the pendulum uh, uh, in means of the, of the first joint of the first joint Q1. So we have an indirect uh, actuation over the, the, the pendulum using the, the inertia wheel. So um, uh, the, um, uh, another thing we can say about this is that the, the we have even if we have three different uh, joints. The only actuated joint is the is is the, the second one, uh, we, where we have the the inertia wheel. The Q1 and Q3 are passive joints, we, which means they are not uh, actuated. So using this diagram, the, this schematic uh, drawing of the of the mechanism, we uh, we we obtain the, the the we define the the parameters of the of the mechanism in order to um, model. Uh, or to obtain the, the kinematic and, and dynamic model. So the, the kinematic model can, can be obtained the, defining the, the, proper, the proper geometric transformation between the, the, the coordinate systems. In, in, in the previous image, we, we have uh, six different uh, uh, coordinate systems to describe the the motion of the of the platform. We we have uh, three different uh, joints and three and and, and another three uh, coordinate systems for the center of mass of each one of the of the elements. Um, uh, well, using the the Denard uh, convention, we define the the parameters, the the transformation between these uh, between these coordinate systems, and we have the this this table. Uh, then uh, uh, we obtain the the general uh, transformation matrix from the base to each one of the of the masses. Uh, by multiplying the the corresponding uh, uh, relative transformation matrices, uh, as we can see, uh, the the position of the first mass, which is the the, the base link, uh, only only the, the orientation and the position only depends on the value of the of the of the first joint. Uh, for the second mass, the the position and orientation of the of the inertia wheel. Uh, depends on the on the value of the first and second joints. Uh, the the position and orientation of the third uh, mass, which is the inverted pendulum, depends on the first and third joint, which is the the base link and the joint of the of the pendulum. So uh, even if kinematically uh, there is no uh, the, the the coupling is only about the, the 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 first joint, we can see that in in the dynamic model that there is uh, much more uh, coupling elements. So the the dynamic model was uh, obtained using the the general Euler Lagrange methodology, which produces the well known uh, dynamic uh, equation of the of a manipulator, uh, where the matrices, where the inertia matrix, Coriolis matrix, and uh, vector of gravity forces are uh, defined as usually. When we apply this, this algorithm to Using the 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 relative transformation and and the positions and uh, velocities obtained obtained based on these uh, transformations, we obtain um, uh, the the values for these for these three elements of the uh, for, for the equation of the of the manipulator. Um, 
Here I present only the, the non-zero elements of, the, of these matrices. Um, uh, so we, we have a, a system of three, uh, of three, three variables, which is uh, the, the, the three, um, the, 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 the general, the, the values of the positions and velocities and acceleration of each one of the three joints. So these are the, the, the non-zero elements of the inertia matrix, the Coriolis matrix, and the vector of, of gravity forces. Uh, when we uh, get these, these values, we notice that there are uh, several uh, similitudes with, the, with the, the models of the original fruta pendulum and the, um, and the model of the uh, inertia wheel pendulum. Uh, the, this was, uh, the, uh, we, we, we know that that was the, what we are going to, to have because we can see uh, in, the, in the proposed mechanism that uh, both the inverted pendulum, the, the fruta pendulum and the uh, inertia wheel pendulum are, can be seen as two particular cases of this more general uh, mechanism. So when we, when we um, uh, eliminate the, the mass properties and inertia properties of the, of the inertia wheel, we found uh, that the, the, the equations uh, led to the model of the fruta pendulum. And also when we uh, eliminate the dynamic uh, parameters of the inverted pendulum, we get the, the equations of uh, inertia wheel pendulum uh, as, as, this, as this presented la, uh, in this slide. Uh, th these, these are the, the, the equation that we get when we um, omit the inertia wheel uh, parameters. And these equations are uh, the equivalent to the fruta pendulum that uh, we can find in the, in the literature. And, and when we eliminate the, the dynamic parameters of the inverted pendulum, we get uh, these equations which are very similar to the um, uh, inertia wheel uh, pendulum, except, except that we don't have this term, which is the, 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 the force, uh, the, the, the gravity force uh, that, uh, that, that we have in the, in the original inertia wheel pendulum. The, the reason we don't have that, uh, that, that force is because of the orientation, the, the direction of the gravity vector. Uh, in the original uh, inertia wheel pendulum, the gravity uh, uh, actuates in the X axis, and here the gravity actuates in the uh, C, C uh, axis. So, uh, Beyond that, uh, all of the other elements are, are the, the same. Uh, this is an, an schematic model of, of, the, of the proposed platform. We, we have the, the inertia wheel at the left. We have the inverted pendulum at the right. We have um, sensors uh, to, to measure the, the, the angular position of the three, uh, the three joints with a contactless uh, magnetic uh, encoder. And we, we will use a microcontroller to, or, or our FPGA to implement the different um, uh, control techniques. So uh, at, at the moment we have, uh, we are building the, the, the platform. So we also made an, uh, an, an analysis of the, um, parameters, we, we define or we obtain the, the inertia values, the mass uh, using a parametric uh, um, conceptualization of the, of the links. Uh, this way we can modify some distance, some radius, and we can uh, reevaluate all the other dynamic parameters of each uh, mass, of each element. 
we can use this information for for another uh, for further analysis in future work. Um, we implement a very basic uh, control in in simulations to prove that the it was possible to 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 control the the platform. Here we we implement a PD controller plus a, a compensation of the velocity term. And we tested uh, with uh, different initial conditions around the um, unstable uh, equilibrium point. And uh, we also uh, put a, a perturbation here at the at five seconds of the simulation. We all, we now we we can see the the the, the force the the, the torque uh, that. Uh, need to be used in the motor to produce these tra trajectories. And we also present the angular speed of the wheel, which must uh, converge to, to zero. To zero. Um, finally, uh, here is a, a picture uh, of, the, of the, the current state of the platform. We, we are the, uh, building the electronic um, Sensors, the electronic boards for the for the sensors in order to to test the control control loads in this in this platform, which I hope uh, uh, can can be used to to prove uh, uh, new control techniques techniques in this uh, more challenging uh, platform, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael, for your presentation. We still have some some time for questions. Uh, is there any question? Please raise your hand if you have any question. Or activate your microphone. It also seems this time that the presentation was very clear. There are no questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand at the beginning when you were, you were presenting on page three, the schematic uh, is if this is a more general model. model. This one? Uh, when you, at the beginning, when you were presenting the first, the first model, about page three or four. Yeah, the equation or, or the... The first model you presented, I, I, I think you, you said that the, the, uh, this was a more general model that you, after that, you found the similar similarities between this model and the Furuta pendulum? Yes, uh, the, this is the, you can still see my presentation, right? Yeah. Uh, this this is the, the proposed uh, uh, architecture or the, the proposed uh, um, prototype. Okay. So we, we can see that the, that it has uh, elements of the inertia wheel and also of the uh, of an inverted pendulum. So the Furuta pendulum and the inertia wheel pendulum can be seen as particular, as particular cases, cases of, of this okay. more general mechanism. Yes. The idea is to, to propose a more challenging uh, platform to implement uh, control control laws as this uh, has many different uh, characteristics, challenging characteristics that we don't currently have in, in, uh, in one platform. And when you use the inertial wheel as a control, uh, what is the control action of the inertial wheel? Uh, what do you use in as control? Uh, for the moment, uh, the idea was only to, to present the, the architecture. Uh, we only use a PID controller plus a turn which uh, Limitates the, the the velocity, the the angular velocity of, of the wheel. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the, and you said the prototype is still under construction. Huh? Yes, uh, the the mechanical part is already finished. We are uh, dealing with the design and construction of the electronic parts uh, the um, for the sensors. Okay, well, I think that's all. Well, thank you very much, Rafael. Well, the title of the next paper is uh, Simplify Reactive Power Control for Multilevel Inverted for Grid Connected Photovoltaic Applications. 
I think we presented by Roberto Morales, I guess. Yeah. Yes, uh, actually by Francisco Perez. Francisco Perez, OK. Yeah. OK, go ahead, Francisco. Please share, share your presentation. Uh, can you share me the permissions to share my presentation? For a second. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, thanks so much. Go ahead, permission granted. Yeah, thanks so much. Actually, I can I can turn on my my camera. Oh, um, thanks so much. My name is Francisco Perez Guapio. Um, my topic is simplify reactive power control of a multi-level inverter for grid connection photovoltaic applications. Um, this paper presents a new simplified reactive power control technique based on the DQ regulatory frame theory. The proposed simplified reactive control was constructed to use on a seven-level edge-rich power inverter. Similar results of the proposed simplified control scheme verify low THD in the current and the high performance. Uh, in this research, a seven level inverter was built with three cascaded edge bridge using IGBT's transistor as a power switches. Uh, each edge bridge is fed by an array of two solar panels model L60MC250 um, by SolarTech, connected in a, connected each, each uh, pair, of, pair of solar panels in series generated a 61.92 volts and volts and the maximum power point. The topology uses followed in this in this example is um, a single stage uh, DC to AC converter. Uh, we use this uh, 200 uh, 2400 microfarads to stabilize the voltage on each PV array. Um, uh, the output we use a uh, 2.2 millihenries common mode inductive filter to reduce the uh, current distortion. Uh, on this stage, voltage and current sensor are places at the output of each of the three solar panel arrays to calculate the maximum power point. Actually, in this, in this picture, we can see where the current sensor and the voltage sensors are placed. Now, the AC stage sensor are placed in two different sections. And the output of the multi-level inverter, we, call, we locate the voltage sensor on the terminals. Uh, the voltage sensor is placed at the terminals of the single phase AC distribution network. Um, the current sensor is placed um, uh, before the filter because we need to measure only the output current of the, of the inverter. Um, our, our algorithm that we propose here is this one. We can see in this part the MPPT algorithms to track uh, the maximum power point of each, pan, each, each PV array. And we measured um, the output current of each PV array and we calculate the total current that we have here. We use a PLL to estimate the angle row of uh, the voltage of the voltage read, um, we create a delay with uh, um, filters and uh, with um, filters to create from uh, from the current, the current of the grid, the current of this of the output. We create two different uh, two different currents shifted 90 degrees. Due to low conversion rate of the solar panels, the incremental conduction algorithm is used to calculate the current of the maximum power point. Actually, in the picture, we can see that the maximum power point tracker are placed of each PV array. In this case, we have three different arrays and we calculate three different uh, power points. The logic that we use to calculate the um, maximum power point for each PV array is shown in the second feature on the right side. With the maximum power point current of each PV array, the total maximum current, called I total, is used to estimate the current reference for the PV PI controllers. 
in this case only we create the addition of the each PB, each current calculated for the MPPT, MPPT trackers. We calculate um, the input current for the controls. Two current signals, actually, uh, I alpha and I beta, shifted 90 degrees from each other, are generated from the output current IG of the multilevel inverter. With these currents and the voltage angle grown, the power transformations is performed to obtain ID and IQ. These currents uh, are used to calculate the, um, the feedback point to generate IQ, ID star and IQ star from I total. IQ star is assigned with a value equal, equal to or less than I total to the calculation of the reference components. ID is performed with equation number two. In this case, we calculate ID, the component, the active component of the current uh, with the square root of the I total less I, IQ star. The, the square values of these, these, these values. To estimate the error of the API controller of the D components, ID star must change the sign. In this case, to calculate the error that is the input to the PI controller, the, um, the D part is multiplied by minus one, um, the difference between the values. But in this case, the IQ error, that is the input to the PI controller for the Q part is, uh, is with not change. The result obtained of the output of the two PI controllers are the voltage components BD out and BQ out, which are in the DQ frame. To transform the BD and um, BQ outputs, we use the an inverse part transformation to perform um, to transform the output from the DQ frame to alpha beta frame. Since the development system is a single phase, only the B, B, B beta component is used modulated throughout the phase shift the pulse weird modulation technique called uh, PSPWM. In this case, in the picture, we can see uh, each cells called UPWM. Um, we can see how uh, the carrier of each cell is shifted uh, some degrees to create the um, multi-level inverter technique, multi-level modulation, excuse me. Uh, modulator results, in this case, the sub level inverter include the proposed control algorithm in the um, feature of the left. What's parameter to use in MATLAB simulating software to validate the results of the proposed control? We use um, the out control algorithm in the left part on the um, inverter topology that we use, the um, single stage uh, topology that we use uh, in the right side. And we have some tests. The first test, is the experiments performed with vari variable solar radiation and no current phase shift to observe the performance of the proposed control during the tracking of the maximum power point. The value of the reference IQ is set to zero and the ID star component is equal to the value of the maximum total current, I total. In this case, we, va we vary the solar radiance. In this case, we can see the graph in black how the solar radiance is variable from 300 watts per square meter. Um, we vary it on to 1,000 1, watts per square meter. We can see how the, car, the output current is varied from the, the output of the inverter, uh, but the voltage that we, that we create at uh, the output, the modulator voltage, the seven level voltage, is actually almost the same in all the cases. We only Move, uh, oh, we only modify the output current. After the THD analysis of the current at different solar radiation conditions, we can see that at 300 watts per square meter, we can we can measure uh, THD equal to 3.7 percent, and 1,000 watts per square meter, we can see a THD of 2.18 percent. Um, a second test. The second experiment allows observing the system performance when injecting reactive power to the grid throughout the current uh, current phase shift. You know, in this case, we can see in this picture that uh, we modify the um, the angle of the current, and we can generate uh, reactive power with negative reactive power or positive reactive power. 
For this experiment, constant solar radiation is used, and only the value of the current reference uh, I, IQ and ID star in the pair controllers are changed. Actually, multiple changes are made in the component IQ star to generate reactive power. Uh, performing an analysis in the harmonic distortion of current generated by the seven level inverters, we can see that the THD is 3.43%. The highest distortion is presented with a reactive power injection of 1,150 uh, reactive reactive power, and it can be seen in the THD analysis in the uh, in the picture of the right. Um, conclusion: you know, In these papers, a new simplified control technique based on DQ theory is proposed for photovoltaic power generations. Uh, the hardware's volume employee uses fewer component power components compared with two stage seven level inverters. Actually, in this case, we reduce the um, DC to DC uh, part. Um, we use only um, 2,400 um, microfarad capacitor to stabilize the output voltage of so the PV arrays. And um, actually, in this case, we we can reduce the um, the losses that the uh, switch creates creates during the computation. The control proposal allows the injection of alternated current in phase with the grid or with a phase shift that the user can adjust. And on this case, we can add a different capacity capability to the um, solar inverter to create reactive power and inject it to the grid, a uh, single phase grid. And the proposed control does not have a solar radiation balance in the stage. Uh, in this case, we we use um, a small grid, a small array of PV, PV, PV uh, photovoltaic photovoltaic panels, and we try to use the um, at least the, the minimum quantity that we could uh, we could use to create the voltage, and we didn't use uh, a step up uh, step up part, and due to the um, due to that we don't we don't know we don't need. Um, um, we don't need yeah, DC to DC DC to DC converters. The the implementation in digital processing system is it's easy to easy to implement. Um, the computation the computational power is low than other other proposed other techniques that uh, other authors have been proposed before. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your time. Actually, do you have any question? Well, thank you, Jose Francisco, for your presentation. You didn't use all the time you had, so we have uh, some time for questions. Uh, does anybody has have a question? Please raise your hand or activate your microphone. Are there any questions? Yeah, I will present my the two two parts of my investigation. Now it could be easy to find questions for this part, maybe. And actually, this this is the two pictures that we have here. On the left side, we can see uh, our control algorithm that we present. On mm -hmm. the in the right side, we can see the uh, DC to AC converters uh, in the multi-level topology that we have here. Actually, I have the question here. Uh, yeah. the, the the number of arrays you have here, on what depend on what depends the, the number of arrays you have? Yeah, actually, the number of PV arrays that we have here is uh, depends on the minimum voltage that we need to uh, inject inject current to the grid. Actually, in this case, we need at least um, at least a higher voltage that that the grid has. You know, in this case. We we take it and we reduce the quantity that PV arrays uh, we could have in um, in the inverter uh, mm -hmm. to reduce cost in um, in implementation. Okay. Yeah. So it, depends, it depends on the number of the of the quantity of the voltage. Yeah, actually the output voltage to the grid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and for the for the control part, uh, do you use any other control or just PI con PI control? Controllers. Actually, I, we tested only PI control, discrete controls um, that we created, and we use forward forward step um, inter integration technique mm -hmm. to estimate the integration of this part 
Um, actually, we didn't test any other kind of control technique. And in this case, we only use classic PI controllers. Well, any other question, anyone? We still have some time. Yeah. Actually, in this in this case, the most complicated part of the control is trying to synchronize the um, the PI controllers because we could find uh, relationship between the capacitors that we have in um, the um, in the input of the DC to AC converter and the um, in the speed that the um, PI con the PI control has. In this in, in this case, that we find that with a higher capacitance value of the C1 or 2 or 3, if, if we increase then the value of the C capacitors, we can find um, uh, less sensitive part, uh, less sensitive um, response of the PI controllers. In this case, we can see that we could vary, uh, change the uh, solar radiation on the panels, but mm -hmm. the control didn't find the, um, the change. But we could reduce the capacitance, we could find uh, a higher ripple in the output current. That is curious in this part. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you thinking, are you considering any other applications so other than photovoltaic? Actually, um, we try to consider um, more levels, as actually, or more PB, P, uh, more power capacity in this case, because we only use. Um, Actually, um, single phase um, actually is reduce the power that we can generate in this case. But actually, um, our our intention is to create um, or actually use more PV arrays or even more power. Um, try to use um, more power in the output, or even change the. Um, change the single phase to a three phase um, voltage width. So that's the idea that we have here in this case. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thanks Mario for, thanks thank for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jose Francisco. Uh, yeah. oh. I stop sharing my presentation. Thanks so much okay. for the time. Thank you, thank you. We still have some two or two more minutes. Well, we, we, in the meantime, we can still we can present uh, or give alongs to the next present presentation. Um, uh, so the next the next paper is going to be presented by Juan Carlos is here or Jorge Said. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Juan Carlos. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, I can hear you. Okay, I'm here. So I guess we have to grant it uh, permission to share your presentation. Already has permission granted. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Maybe we, we can start. So, yeah. Just just uh, share your presentation, and we we, we can still wait uh, two minutes. So you just to start in time. Okay. If you can please share your presentation and activate your camera. Sure. Um, can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. I'm you. going to share my screen. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the presentation. Yeah, yeah. I can see your presentation now. Okay. So I uh, maybe you can you can still wait uh, two more minutes just just to start on time. Sure. I will let you know as soon as you can you can start on just to keep the time schedule. So the next paper uh, is entitled Model Reference Adaptive Control for an Unmanned Aerial Vehicle with variable mass payloads by Juan Carlos Lopez Hoyos, Jorge Said Cervantes Rojas, Patricio Ordaz, and Omar Sandre Hernandez. Presented by Juan Carlos Lopez. So you can start now, Juan Carlos. Okay, thanks. 
Um, hello and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Lopez and I'm going to talk about the paper entitled Model Reference Adaptive Control for an Unmanned Aerial Vehicle with Variable Mass Payloads. This paper uh, is a product uh, that I made in collaboration with Dr. Jorge Sayus de Rojas, Patricia Ordaz, and Omar Sangre. And it arises from my master's thesis that I've been working as a student of Maestría en Ciencias en Automatización y Control at Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo. So, for today, we are going to start giving a little introduction to continue with the presentation of the dynamic model, the model reference adaptive control for a quadrotor, the simulation results, and finally, I'm going to give a conclusion. Well, um, as an introduction, we have that in many aerial vehicles can be employed in tasks where transport, relays, and drop of payload is required. This is very important in delivery service, agriculture, agriculture application like irrigation, fumigation, or sowing, and much more applications. So this is a prolific and a promising area. However, we have to face an important problem because when it is necessary to lift or relay some payload, the aircraft must become an uncertain parameter, and this issue will generate a degradation of the flight performance. That also could uh, finish in an air crash or another problem. So the design of a control loop that allows a good performance under parametric variation, it takes a lot of importance. Uh, today with the parametric variation, we, have, we, we know that adaptive control represents a good option to control systems which the dynamic model contains uncertain parameters. In this way, the aim of this work is the design of a model reference adaptive control in order to control the position of a quadrotor under payload variation during hover flight. The purpose of the model reference adaptive control is to make that the output plant behave according to the output of a reference model. As we can see in this scheme, we have a plant with, with certain parameters. And also we have an adaptation rule that allows to obtain an estimate of those parameters. And then the controller is now able to reduce the tracking error between the real system output and the reference model output. Well, now let me say something about the dynamic model of the quadrotor. Uh, we can see the quadrotor and a sub object in a three dimensional space where X, Y, and Z represents the position and the Euler angles, uh, phi, theta, and psi represents the orientation. Also, we have four control inputs that correspond to the main thrust, denoted by U, and the moments roll, pitch, in Yao. So uh, if we use the Euler Lagrange formulation, we can obtain the model you can see in this slide. This is a simplified model represented by six differential equations. And it's a simplified model in order to um, make more easier the design of the control. Well, uh, once we have the dynamic model, now we're going to start with the control design. For that, first, uh, the feedback control lab is proposed as we can see on equation two at the top of this slide. Uh, we use this control entry and substituting in the model I presented before, we obtain the result that is showing in three. At the same time, the previous equation can be rewritten into a, ma into a matrix structure as shown in form, where P are a matrix with the parameters of the system, Q is a matrix with the state of the system, G contains the gravitational acceleration, and also we have a vector U that contains the control inputs that also we are defined as it's, uh, it's shown in equation five. Next, we take the reference model in the form that is described by equation six. This is a um, common form as um, similar to a PD control. 
Um, and well, in, in this dynamic where uh, the matrices K, A and K, B represents the gains of the control and are positive definite. On the other hand, QD represents the decided positions for the, for the reference input and QM are the states of the reference models. So we have, uh, according to the, to the scheme we saw before, the tracking error is defined as is denoted by equation seven, where Q as minus QM. Um, and also we have the uncertain parameters of the system that correspond to the mass that is going to change uh, when the when the quadrotum relays the payload, and also the moments of inertia that correspond to the first to the main moments of inertia. Ix, Iy, and Ic, and also we have, uh, according to the uh, to the scheme again, uh, we have that the estimation, that the adaptation rule, that allows to estimate uh, a value of these parameters, and consequently we have an estimation error that is determined by equation number eight. Well. Uh, for the control design, we are going to consider the Japan of candidate function that you can see on the top of the slide in equation nine. We are going to get in the time derivative of, of, of this equation and we obtain the result that is, for, that is showing in equation then. So according to four and seven, as we see before, uh, we can express a part of equation then in the relation that is shown at the bottom of the slide in equation 11. And at the same time, a part of the previous equation can be described as, as, a, param as a parameterization uh, that, con that includes a matrix, well, the product of two matrix, or a matrix and a vector, um, where the first matrix corresponds to a regressor matrix and the second vector is the vector of the parameters of the uncertain parameters. So this is very important because it's, uh, it's an essential part of, of control design. And then substituting these equations and considering 8 and 11, now our derivative B is, is expressed as we can see on Equation 13. Well, uh, to continue, we can assume the control law as we can see in equation 14. Uh, and using these relations, then the equation number 13 becomes in the form of equation 15. That, uh, um, as we can see, uh, this is the same derivative we have before, but now it is expressing in in these terms. Um, and well, we are looking that uh, that the system. Um, well, we're looking for the system stability. So to well indeed that that situation, um, we are looking that the derivative becomes negative. So the adaptation rule is given by the equation 16, and in this way, it is possible to make that the derivative now, now as we can see on equation 17, be less or equal than zero. So uh, by Yapin of stability theorem, the error function are now bonded, and by Barbalas lemma, uh, specifically a corollary, we can ensure that the error goes to zero as the time increases. So um, this completes the control design. However, we see, since we have an underactuated system, virtual input for the decider angles ne is necessary to provide. Um, so using two and five, we obtain the following equation that you can see in this slide, uh, including the input control U uh, for the main truths uh, that is described by equation 18 and equation 19 and 20 correspond to the virtual inverse for the desired angles theta and phi. 
Additionally, it is important to mention that for the correct use of the control law that is described by 18, we have to consider that, that the angles 5 and theta will only take values between negative and positive uh, phi over 2. Well, we're going to show the simulation the results. Uh, well, to test the performance of the design and controller, numeric simulation were developed using MATLAB Simulink. Uh, in this case, the decided inputs that we considered uh, are constants for X and Y, and for C, and for C that is the, the altitude of the quadrotor. Uh, we have a heavy, a heavy safe function taking three different values, starting at 1.8 meters, and then 3.5 meters, and finally, and come back to 2.4 meters and according to lapse of time and also in, in order to include the problem of payload relays it is proposed that the mass change according to the function you can see in the bottom of this slide um, as you can see we also have three levels for the for the mass we starting at a mass of 2.2 kilograms then one and a half kilograms, and finally one and a quarter kilogram when the time is over 50 seconds. Now I want to show the fiercely results. Uh, for the quadrotor position, we can see that, uh, well, that the control has a good performance since the quadrotor stays on the desired reference, the speed the maze variations. Uh, especially for X and Y, uh, you can see that the, the performance is really good. Uh, however, over the altitude, yes, uh, we have a little perturbation and a little oscillation uh, when the mass changes, but the quadrotor quickly returns to the desired position and this oscillation is minimum. Um, so I can conclude that the control is, is good. Um, same way for the orientation of, of the quadrotor, the control also shows a good result. Um, as you can see, for all the angular position, um, that is the that keeping near the, the references of so the control is working very fine. And and, este, and consists with the with all the position for hovering that the that we need este, for this work. Um, also, we have the control signals. Uh, uh, I want to focus on the first graph at the top of this slide over the main thrust. Uh, this because we can see how the control of how the action control is working to in order to compensate the mesh variations uh, in, in the different moments where this phenomenon takes place. And well, finally, this slide shows the parameters of adjustment that is, is provided by the adaptation rule. Uh, well, it is observed that the estimated mass coincides with the true value of the real system. And for the moments of inertia, also we have a real level of coincidence. Uh, maybe, no, uh, maybe in the moments of inertia, we do not have the exactly, exactly parameter, uh, but the estimated value is still really closer to the real value. And well, when I will going to give the conclusions, the archive regulation on the change of payload is achieved by using the model reference adaptive control scheme and the numerical simulation so good performance for the hoverfly, the speed the mass change. And while this is an interesting option and also a low cost alternative for application where the transport and drop of payload is required, like in agricultural tasks, uh, for example, is the fumigation or sowing. And here we have some reference that I use in this presentation. And I thanks for your attention. And I also want to thanks to my in Ciencias and Automaticity Control and Conacyt for the super providing in the development of this research. If you have a question, I will try to answer it. And that's all. Well, thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos, for the presentation. Uh, we have um, five minutes or so for the questions. Uh, are there any questions? Please raise your hand. 
nobody wants to ask in this session. Any questions? Mm. Uh, Delante, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Silva. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Juan Carlos, uh, I have one question. Because your uh, parameter estimation takes um, uh, almost 10 seconds, is it enough uh, to avoid uh, any shock of your uh, of your um, vehicle? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, well, uh, for the case, for this case in the simulation, uh, we obtain uh, different results. Uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe you can see that you can think that maybe represents a problem. However, uh, like I said before, this is a part as of my master thesis, and then of then we have uh, we have implemented this control on a real platform, and we can observe that the that in fact not represents a problem for a real time implementation. However, uh, maybe it's possible to to search a um, better way to, to reduce the, that time. Yes, because uh, I observed that uh, your, your mass is, is estimated in almost 10 seconds, but the inertials are estimated very quickly. So yeah. uh, I, I don't understand why. Because yeah. they are very related. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, she, yeah, it can represent a problem. However, uh, for the uh, for the real time implementation, we don't have. Uh, uh, well, it's not take a lot of importance in uh, this part uh, of. But you are right. Uh, it will be great that the mass estimation becomes more quickly. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Gerardo, any other, any other question? No, it seems we, we have no more questions. Uh, I have a question, uh, Juan Carlos. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the control signal that, that you have in the, your simulation, what, what, are you, what is the, the control signal? Is the voltage applied to the quadrotor? Uh, okay, well, uh, here in simulation, uh, we have the, uh, the truss, the truss in, in newtons. But uh, for the um, when we uh, when we thinking, thinking about the application, the practical application, uh -huh. what, 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 when, would, what would be your control signal? Yeah, when we use the control, uh, the, the real time implementation, we only use the the voltage uh, by PWM signal to the motors, and we select a range uh, for the maximum, for the minimum, and it, this signal is traduced. It's translate in did in in did in that scale. So and and in and in the control design, can you uh, please uh, come? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, where, where is the 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 control signal? Uh, is it possible that the, the, the control signal can get uh, too big or because uh, you have a division here for depending on the angles? Ah, uh, here. Yeah. Is it uh, possible well, that the the control signal gets too too large? Um, not really, because uh, if the if we consider that angles, uh, obviously the quadrotor maybe crashes, but uh, it's a common a common consideration in the specialized literature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and did, did you try the, the, to track a reference, or you have to put uh, the quadrotor in a in a stable position? Uh, yes, uh, by the moment we only have proof with hoverfly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no reference tracking for the moment. No. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Juan Carlos. Uh, yeah, thank you. Is there is there any other question? No, it seems that we have no more questions. Well, thank you very much again, uh, Juan Carlos. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to stop sharing. OK.
the, la the last paper of this session is entitled Low Level Control of a Quadrotor Using Twin Delayed Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient by Masen Shehaf, Ahmed Sahlul, and Ayman El Badawi. Uh, I I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, so, so sorry. Uh, so this paper is going to be presented by Ahmed or Masen. Ahmed. 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 OK. I can see your presentation now. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yeah, yeah, I can see the presentation, but if you can activate also your camera. Um, uh, I can't activate it from uh, my browser. OK, well, well, let's start it like that. So you can start whenever you want. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Ahmed Zarul. I'm a student at the uh, German University in Cairo. Uh, today, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, our work in uh, flow level control of quadrotor using uh, 20 day deterministic policy agent. Uh, we'll start with a brief background, uh, then, we will talk about some uh, previous work and uh, the aim of our paper. Uh, our methodology results, finally, our conclusion and uh, future recommendations. Uh, for our background, quadrotors um, uh, are used uh, everywhere nowadays. Quadrotors uh, are uh, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, their uh, dynamics are relatively complex, that's why. Uh, uh, in recent uh, research, a lot of people try to use uh, model-free techniques like um, uh, reinforcement learning to develop controllers uh, for uh, these systems. Reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning, like supervised, uh, along with supervised and not supervised learning. Uh, deep reinforcement learning uh, combines uh, uh, the deep neural networks from deep learning with was uh, the framework of reinforcement learning. Um, we'll talk about uh, let's shoot three papers. Oliver's developed uh, controllers for uh, for quadrotors. First paper uh, developed the uh, deterministic policy uh, controller for quadrotor using uh, their own developed uh, technique. Uh, the developed controller uh, is only capable of stabilizing the quadrotor under large initial conditions. Second paper uh, developed the policy gradient based actual critic. Uh, the technique is a stochastic technique, it's not a deterministic technique. Uh, they use two controllers, uh, they developed two controllers, one for stabilization and other for uh, trajectory tracking. Last paper uh, used proximal policy optimization. So then a controller which they tested in simulation for fixed and moving uh, targets. For tracking fixed and moving targets. So, uh, the name of this paper is to design uh, two controllers that are built upon each other. Uh, the first controller uh, is capable of stabilizing a quad, quad rotor starting from any initial condition. Uh, and so, so, sorry, sorry, Ahmed, I'm still seeing the first the first uh, page of your presentation. Is that okay? Uh, you're still seeing the first page. Uh, one second. Yeah, 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 no, it, it changed now, okay. Continue, please. Uh, uh, in this M2, uh, uh, design two controllers that are uh, like built on each other. First controller is capable of stabilizing uh, a certain quad rotor at a given preset point. Uh, second quad rotor is capable of checking uh, a, target, uh, a target point. Uh, we use a second controller after which to uh, uh, test it and checking uh, two given buses. It's capable of checking any given bus. Um, uh, for today, we used a uh, an upgraded version of uh, an older algorithm called the Tenerce policy gradient. Uh, both algorithms are uh, uh, produce deterministic policies. 
In this video, we developed to address an issue with DBG. This issue is overestimation uh, of uh, the value of functions. T3 added uh, th uh, three additions that help in this matter, uh, which is uh, clear the double Q learning, target policy uh, smoothing, uh, and delayed policy updates. Uh, for our simulation, we use an environment. Uh, this environment is called uh, Gym by Boy Drones. Uh, this is a Gym environment which uh, is similar to use in, in reinforcement learning problems. This environment is written using the uh, Boston language and it's a continuous environment, uh, not a discrete one. Uh, because of the large search space, which is based off the environment, we uh, added some termination conditions to limit this creation space. We limited our uh, uh, position boundaries uh, for the x and y coordinates to 3 minutes to 3, to three for z coordinates from 0 to 3. We also added orientation conditions uh, if the role and which angles. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm at, uh, sorry, sorry again. I'm still seeing the same page of the presentation, page five. Okay. By the can, way, can, you I, can, I, can I present like this? Okay, yeah, I see you now, page nine. Okay. okay. Um, so, um, we also added orientation conditions. Uh, if the roll or pitch angle exceeds uh, 90 degrees in either uh, direction, we terminate the episode. Also, we added a next condition. Each episode uh, must not exceed 10 seconds or 500 time steps in simulation. Uh, for our network structure, uh, TD3 has uh, six neural networks in total, four uh, for creative, uh, for, for, uh, four are critic networks and two are actual networks. Critic networks are used for Q value estimations and actual networks uh, output uh, our uh, action uh, signal. Uh, each neural network has two hidden layers, uh, 400 and 300. Uh, our activation layers are radio and our output layers are uh, tension activated. Um, for training uh, our high parameters, I'm only going to focus on learning rate for the neural networks and uh, our exploration noise. Uh, the other parameters are standard parameters. Uh, for our reward function, we use two different reward functions for our two con for our two agents, for our two controllers. Uh, first, for stabilization, uh, it only it's only a function of uh, our uh, position error. For position tracking, we added a simple term that is. Uh, that is there to simply just uh, limit uh, the rotor's acceleration uh, to make the control signal more uh, realistic. And to make the control signal output by the agent, uh, outputted by the agent to more realistic. Uh, for uh, both uh, training uh, sessions, uh, for stabilization training, uh, our initial conditions, each episode is random, uh, has a randomized initial position, starting uh, as the initial position is limited between 2.5 and 2.5 in the x and y direction, and z direction is limited between 0.2 and 2. And our target positions are fixed at 0, 0, and 1 for stabilization. Position tracking, our initial conditions are the same, but our target position changes each, uh, uh, each 500 time steps. Uh, now I'm going to talk about our results. Each neural network was trained for 20 million time steps each. We didn't need uh, that many uh, training steps. Uh, so here we can see that after uh, our running our 20 million time steps, we achieved uh, the highest reward at 1.7 million time steps only, right about here. This is a mini world versus time and also lens for versus time. Uh, this video shows the controller at 1.7 million time steps. 
at each episode starts from random initial position and goes to the target position. Uh, and for and here is a uh, performance of uh, the, uh, the agent during only one episode, starting from a random position and going to zero zero and one zero zero and zero position and one is zero position. Uh, for position tracking training, we can also see here uh, mean world versus time, uh, versus time steps and average length versus time steps. The maximum rods achieved at uh, 1.3, 13.3 million time steps. Sorry, uh, we use uh, the neural networks, which are considered or controllers at uh, this time steps, to uh, simulate our quad rotor starting from random initial positions going to uh, different. Target. Um, after uh, using also this uh, controller, we uh, this is a performance also of uh, one of the episodes, starting from a initial position, going to a certain target, represented by uh, the red dot line. Using uh, our controllers, achieved at 13.3 million times size for the position tracking training. Uh, we tracked two different buses. One of the buses uh, uh, has constant elevations, the other with different elevations. Uh, these are the buses uh, tracked by our uh, agents. Uh, we can see that in the inclined bus, there is more oscillations in the X and Y direction, as you can see here in these graphs. Or uh, x coordinates and y coordinates here. In uh, comparison to the constant elevation uh, path, uh, this is a little bit of the drone tracking the inclined path. And finally, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, the decrease in the reward function. This is typically abnormal in uh, reinforcement learning problems, but here it could be attributed to a number of factors. Uh, one of them is catastrophic forgetting, neural network overfitting, because uh, our neural networks have a lot of nodes, or it could be attributed to discontinuities in our Q function. For our conclusion, uh, uh, using TD3, we achieved less training time than methods uh, uh, discussed in the literature, uh, which shows that TD3 is more sample efficient. Also, we achieved uh, an average small steady state error in comparison with the literature. Uh, this is a simple comparison between between uh, our work in this paper and the uh, discussed literature. For future recommendations, uh, using uh, different kinds of neural networks other than the uh, classic fully connected neural networks like long short term, long short term memory neural networks. And uh, we're also uh, looking into online uh, learning in new world settings and hardware implementation. Uh, references. Uh, thank you very much. I would gladly accept any questions. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Ooh, this last paper. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions, uh, please? Anyone? It seems that we, we don't have any question. Uh, well, I, I have a question so, uh, uh, for the training of the neural network. Network, uh, you do the training only once, or do you have to to do the training several times? But that depends on the trajectory. Depends on sorry. Depends on what? The trajectory, or the, that uh, you are trying to track, or or what? It depends uh, if you okay. do the. You, uh, you train, uh, you train uh, the neural network only once, 
only once here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see here. You know, this, um, uh, this is the training process. This is only training once. Mm -hmm. And as a week here, you achieve uh, we achieve the minimum uh, uh, highest mean world. Uh, this means that uh, our agent uh, maximized its objective, which uh, we discussed here. Mm -hmm. And the position tracking using the agent at this at this instant in training. The agent is consists uh, consists of uh, the actual neural network. The actual neural network is like a controller. It takes in our state vector, which comprises of this here, and that was a control action. So you only train it once, mm -hmm. and you use uh, actual the actual network to. Uh, Use it in any situation. Okay, I see. Well, I don't know if you have any any other question. No. Oh, it seems that. We don't have any more questions. Well, thank you very much Ahmed, for the presentation. Okay. Since that we're finishing this session a little earlier since we have no more questions. Well, uh, this was the last paper of this session, uh, control applications too. So thank you very much uh, all of you for joining in this session. I, I think we, we will finish now. Well, thank you very much for joining us and I'll see, see you in the, the next sessions. Well, goodbye, everybody. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, Ophelia. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you morning, all. <laughs> so we'll continue tomorrow for with the next sessions. <laughs>